Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In this video, we're checking out the Obspot Tiny2 webcam. Let's get started. All right, to kick things off, Obspot sent me the Tiny2 webcam for a fair and honest review. And that's exactly what we're gonna do here. Taking a look at the box, it says exactly what's in it. The Tiny2 webcam, the mount, a USB-C cable, USB A to USB-C adapter, storage case, and more. Opening up the box and the very first thing we see here is some text that says the new era of webcam. And in this little pamphlet is the instruction manual and warranty card. Since this camera does have some AI built into it, it's probably worth checking out that user manual. And at the bottom of the box, there's a case and that's about it. Everything is inside this case. So opening up the case, we can see the USB-C cable, which is Velcroed to the top. We can also see the Tiny2 webcam. The adapter itself is made of metal and doesn't feel cheap. The provided USB-C to USB-C cable is also fairly thick. The monitor mount on this one is a little bit different than other ones I've seen before. It's almost like it's a mount attached to a mount. It will allow you to position the camera in a whole bunch of different angles here. And here's a better look at the Obspot Tiny 2. The head of this thing is on a swivel. It'll go left, it'll go right, it'll go up and down. And that's because this camera will track you if you decided to walk around a room. On the back of this unit, we've got a lone USB-C port. And I love the fact that the USB-C cable is detachable. And on the bottom, we've got threads because this camera can be attached directly to a tripod or a mount. Additionally here, those five little gold circles are magnets because yes, this camera is also magnetic. It'll attach to the stand with magnets and I love this feature. The magnets are pretty darn strong and will allow you to position the camera in even more ways. So at this point in time, you're looking at me through the standard camera on this channel, which is a Logitech Stream Cam at 1080p 60 frames per second. So what I'm gonna do now is just reset this camera to default settings because I do have some color correction going on. So here's the Logitech Stream Cam with default settings. And with the Stream Cam, it's extremely difficult to get it looking good. The default settings on the camera are not very good and I don't recommend keeping them. And the same is probably gonna be true for the Obspot Tiny, but let's take a look at that now. Here's the Obspot Tiny 2 with default settings, and I can tell you right away that the color profile on this one is much closer to real life. And the lighting on this one is a lot more accurate as to what's actually in this room. Now, without configuring anything in this camera, the AI works out of the box. So if I hold my hands up in an L pattern, it should zoom in on my face. There we go. And if I close my hand and open it again in an L pattern, it should zoom away and there we go. Now this next feature I find incredibly useful. Let's say you're having trouble centering yourself in front of the camera, so I'll just put it off to the side there. If I hold my hand up like this, it should automatically turn and face me. And if you move around a lot, you can move around and the camera will follow you. And then when you're done, you can just put your hand up like this again and lock the camera back into place. And the third feature here is the dynamic zoom. So if I put both of my hands into L shapes and pull them apart, it should zoom in the camera. And I can push them together to zoom back out. Now, if motion controls are not your thing, this is where the instruction manual comes in handy. There are voice controls built into the camera. Zoom in closer. Zoom in closer. Zoom out further. Sleep tiny. High tiny. Pretty neat. Now one thing I've just noticed right away is that after putting this camera to sleep with my voice and waking it up, there's a large amount of latency between the audio and video. The video now appears to be lagging pretty significantly. So to fix this, I had to unplug the camera and plug it back in, which is really unfortunate. Now, I also noticed a problem present in Linux, but not in Windows. And that's if I tried to configure this camera in OBS, which is the recording software I'm using right now. If I open up the camera properties here, immediately the camera zooms in and points to the ceiling. And I can't reset that until I unplug the camera. Another thing I noticed with the Obspot Tiny 2 is that as soon as I changed the frame rate and forced it to 60 frames a second, it completely changed the picture. I'm looking at the picture right now and the color temperature keeps changing and I'm not a big fan of that. 
So for fairness sake, I'm assuming most people are probably going to use this webcam with Windows. So I've switched over to Windows and here are the default settings for the Opspot Tiny 2. And if I take a look here, the gestures work exactly the same as they did on Linux, which is a very good thing. I can move around and the camera's going to follow me. I can put my hand back up and, well, the camera's going to stop following me. Now by default here, it appears to be set to 4K30, and I'm going to change these settings down to 1080p60. So here is 1080p at 60 frames per second, and I'm noticing right away that the color temperature on this one is changing quite a bit. It's all over the place. I'm also noticing that the camera is struggling at this resolution with this lighting. The motion is better, and that's great, but the camera itself is not performing near as well. This is the same issue I had on Linux when I adjusted the frame rate. So I'm assuming on Linux, if you change the frame rate, it automatically lowers the resolution. So for some fun now, here's the Logitech Stream Cam on the left-hand side compared against the Tiny 2 on the right-hand side. And you can see immediately that the field of view is considerably different between the two cameras. And the picture is considerably different between the two cameras, both on default settings. So at this point in time, I have turned off all of the lighting in this room. The only thing illuminating me right now is the lighting from my monitor. I can see myself in the Logitech Stream Cam, kind of, and I can't see myself in the Tiny 2. And the motion on the Stream Cam is impressive. It's holding up. If I move out of the way, I'm wondering if you can see my fireplace. So now I have turned on one light. The light is to my left, it's a warm light, and the Tiny 2 is accurately reflecting that. The stream cam, I am a little bit grainy and blown out. But let me know your thoughts about this one in the comments below. You can see on the Tiny 2 that I have absolutely no light to my left hand side. Even with the stream cam, you can kind of see which hand is blown out by holding them both up. I've quickly changed from warm lighting, which is more yellow, to cooler lighting, which is more blue on the left-hand side. And the Obspot Tiny 2 is reflecting that, not perfectly, I'm noticing that there are some issues here with the white balance. And the stream cam seems to be relatively the same. It didn't really care if it was warm or cool light. Here is warm light on both my left and right hand sides. And you can see that based on my hands when I'm holding them up to the sides, they're being illuminated almost equally. The stream cam, I'm a little bit blown out. And the Obspot Tiny 2, I would say, is an accurate representation of the color in this room. Here's a quick change from warm lighting to cooler lighting. And the Obspot Tiny 2 has also reflected that just a little bit better. And I'm noticing the Obspot Tiny 2 is not struggling as much anymore. So now I've turned on both warm and cool lights on the left and right hand sides. And I'm noticing that the Logitech Stream Cam is starting to perform a little bit better with full lighting. Let me know your thoughts with comparison here between the two cameras in the comments below. Now this situation I would argue is close to a real world test. As YouTubers, we often have lights pointed directly at our face to help illuminate us. But in the real world, it's not necessarily the case. Sometimes you just use the ceiling lights and that's it. So I just have the ceiling lights on in this room. I've got some pot lights on and the room is bright, but you wouldn't be able to tell that with the Obspot Tiny 2. The stream cam is doing a much better job right now illuminating me. And here's what it looks like with every single light turned on. And this is kind of an unrealistic situation. I don't use the overhead lights for filming, and I can't picture most people turning on every single light here, including my desk lights, just to use the camera. The stream cam appears to be loving this. It really likes the light. The Obspot Tiny 2, I would argue the color is a little bit off here, but at the same time, let me know your thoughts about this comparison in the comments below. Now, throughout this video, you've been listening to me through the audio on my RE20, so I'm going to move that out of the way, and you're listening to me now through the Obspot Tiny 2. This is what the built-in microphones sound like. Pop, pop, popsicle. Ice, ice, icicle. Test, test, testing. One, two, and three. And here is the built-in audio through the Logitech Stream Cam. Pop, pop, popsicle. Ice, ice, icicle. Test, test, testing. One, two, and three. The last test I'm going to do here is autofocus, just to see which camera focuses better. So I'm going to cover both cameras. And I'm going to hold this up and then move it away and see which camera focuses first. The Stream Cam is still struggling. There it goes. I'm going to hold this up again. 
pull it away and the stream cam still takes quite a bit of time. The OpSpot Tiny 2 is very impressive. For some fun here, let's do this quickly and you'll really be able to see the difference. So before I get into my overall recommendation, let's go over my likes and dislikes about the Tiny 2 and we'll start out here with my likes. First and foremost, I like the voice controls. I like the motion controls. I like the fact that it's extremely easy to set up in position. I like the magnetic base. I like the detachable USB-C cable. And I like the picture provided the lighting is right. And the last thing here is the fact that with default settings, so just plug and play, this camera performs fairly well. The default here seems to be 4K and that brings me to my dislikes. First and foremost on the dislike side, if you use this camera in anything other than 4K, the picture suffers quite a bit. If you put it down to 1080p, you're going to notice a huge quality drop. Yes, there is a quality drop from 4K to 1080p. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the sensor. It was struggling in 1080p mode. It couldn't maintain the proper color balance. It was really struggling and that was really unfortunate. I also didn't like the fact that it does say you can use this on Linux, but if you're trying to configure the camera on Linux, you may run into a few issues, especially if you're using OBS. The camera just decides to automatically focus on the ceiling and you have to reset the camera in order to get it working again. I also didn't like the fact that if I put this camera to sleep with my voice and woke it up, there was a very big delay with the video afterwards. You could fix this by unplugging and replugging in the camera, but at the same time, it's pretty annoying. This might be fixed with a patch later on, who knows? So let's get into my overall recommendations and we'll take a look at the price here. Right now, the OpSpot Tiny 2 is priced at 329 USD. For comparison's sake, we were also looking at the Logitech StreamCam. That is priced at $101 overall, over three times cheaper. So at $329, would I recommend the OpSpot Tiny 2? And the answer here is, it depends. The OBSPOT Tiny 2 has a bunch of features, and if you plan on using them, if you need to zoom in and zoom out, if you need something to facial track you, if you're going to be moving around the room, if you want to use voice and gesture controls, then the answer is maybe, especially if you like the picture. However, if you're just going to be sitting in front of the camera and not using any of those features, I can't recommend it at that price. So to me, it's entirely a use case scenario, and I would also argue it's easier to configure and get up and running than a mirrorless camera. Now to throw a wrench in the mix, here's the Tiny 2 on the left hand side and the stream cam on the right hand side when I've tried to fully optimize these cameras and not use default settings. It's easy to tell that the Tiny 2 has a way better sensor. The picture is incredibly better. However, the picture is just a little bit dark here and that's due to my current lighting setup. So I think the Tiny 2 is a much better camera than the stream cam, but for $200 more, is it worth it to you? But anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point, all stuff and no fluff. Shoutouts to Obspot for providing the Tiny 2 for a fair and honest review. Let me know your thoughts about the Tiny 2 in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button. Check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate. Save your state.